All right, in this video, I'm gonna be giving you guys my top five reasons to record an FL Studio over almost any other DAW. Now, quickly, a little background on what I do. I've been making vocal presets for almost two years now, and I've been an engineer for over six years. I've worked with artists like Wapdad 4000, Warhol, Cousin Stiz, and many more in studios in LA and in Chicago. Now, the point is I've used many different DAWs to record many different artists, but there's a couple reasons why FL Studio just sticks out to me. Now don't get me wrong, Pro Tools does have its time and place, but let me show you guys why I personally pick FL Studio over every other DAW. All right, now reason number one is gonna be FL Studio's customization. Now FL Studio is built a bit differently than most DAWs as far as what I'm concerned. It gives you a lot of freedom. And basically what I mean by this is I have my specific way of recording and how I usually like to record in FL Studio, which I'll show you guys. But if you look at underground artists recording on the internet, you're gonna tell that there's a bunch of different ways for people to record. So I'm gonna start out by showing you my way and then I'm also gonna show you a couple different ways that I've seen on the internet that you could actually record in FL Studio. All right, so my way of recording is pretty simple. Um, let me find a beat for you guys real quick. I'll just drag in a random beat that I have. We're not actually gonna do everything on this, but we're gonna bring a beat in, actually take that out and drag it over the mixer track. And it's gonna bring you this drop samples thing. Uh, just go to audio tracks. So this will just link it over to this mixer, which is cool. And then I'm gonna create a little recording track. This is, like I said, my personal method. So what I would do is, uh, let's make some Auto-Tune Pro real quick. Let's use low latency. And this is F sharp minor. Boom, F sharp minor. I'll just turn that retune speed all the way up. Let's get a little EQ going. Oops, that's not what we want. We want that fab filter. I'm just gonna go to the oh, vocal. Take out some of that low end. Making a super simple recording track here. And then we're going to get the R compressor by Waves. Throw the ratio at 5 to 1. And then a uh, quick little attack and release like that. And just bring this threshold down. We'll have to adjust that a little bit later. And then uh, I guess I'll just throw a little reverb. So this is like a basic little recording track right now. Actually, I'm also going to throw NS1 on here. So we have no background noise. But let's actually rename this to recording. And I like to make it red. And then this is where my method actually comes in. I right click and click assign to new audio tracks and this will link it to the playlist track. So now you can set your input and now we can hear ourselves, which is cool. So uh, let's fix this reverb real quick because that sounds absolutely terrible. Yeah, 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 yeah. And then we can just record. And all you'd have to do is make sure you're armed and click the R button on your keyboard. Make sure. Yeah, yeah, I could party like I'm dead and I could party like a rock star, yeah. Shawty, open your eyes until you see what you want. You can look in my eyes and understand I'm dead. I can't even tell you everything until I'm right. You can see the guy that might be in your eyes, but I'm wrong. No one ever said I'm right. Fucking on this bitch and she be blowing on my pipe, yeah. It's as simple as that. So yeah, like I said, that would be a method of how I record. And then what I see on the internet is what I'm gonna do is unassign this. So we're gonna delete this track and go like that. So now we still have this track right here. So now we just have a mixer track called recording. And this is what I see on the internet. I don't personally like this method, but I think what people like about it is you could just record and record. Like if you punch in, it makes it a little quicker, I guess. So you could do something like this. So we set the input um, and then you got to arm the mixer track, which is down here. So now, now we, we can hear ourselves, ourselves again. again. And then if you just go to record, it's just going to lay these down in the mixer track. So I think, and I think it's, uh, yeah, it's auto routed. So you can just go like this, huh. yeah, I'm a, but you mess up.
And then, yeah, that's one, uh, that's another method. So yeah, obviously we'd have to adjust this preset a little bit. I'd probably throw a little fresh air on here. But I'm just showing you methods right now, but I guess let's fix this anyways. Fresh air. Yeah, I'm in love with a stripper bitch. She kind of crazy, but I tell her she a simple bitch. And when I do it, I do it. I gotta do it again. And I got people running deep because I see that I win. Yeah, so that is reason number one different ways of recording. Now, reason number two is the use of presets in FL Studio. Now, I know every other doll allows you to use presets, but for some reason, the way FL Studio does it just feels so simple and smooth. Now, you can either drag and drop from a different folder on your desktop, or you can use FL Studio's preset bin, which just allows you to right click a mixer track and click that preset and have it loaded up right away which I think is the main reason FL Studio is so popular to record in now is because of how easy it just is to record. It's really just two to three clicks of a button and you can be recording right away. Now, if you didn't know, I run a website, quintinbaba.com, where I have tons and tons of different presets on underground artists and also mainstream artists. So if you wanna check that out, definitely head down to the link in the description. And I'm even gonna show you how easy it is to use one of my presets. So reason number two being how easy you can use presets. Let me just show you how quickly I could switch up this preset if I wanted to. So I just go file. Go over to my presets right here, and I guess we're kind of going for a juice sound right here. So I'd go to juice waves main, let that load up, and all we have to do is change this to F sharp, and then I do have to load up the bus. Yeah, I'm in love with a stripper bitch. She kind of crazy, but I tell her she a simple bitch. And when I do it, I do it, I gotta do it again. And I got people running deep because I see that I win. Yeah, reason number two. Like I said, that's short and sweet. But I mean, that's just that goes to show you how simple it is to drag a preset in. And then if we wanted to record on it, we just have to arm the track again, uh, which is right here. Here, here, here. Yeah, we can just go right back into recording. Running deep because I see that I win. Break my neck when I'm looking at this bitch. Cause she across the room looking better than in. Running deep. So yeah, there we go. Reason number two, it is simple to use presets. It's just so fast. Now, the third reason is a very simple one, but it's the FL Studio playlist. And I might be biased to this because some people hate it and some people like it, but it's pretty cool. It really gives you so much freedom and I've never seen this in really any other DAW. A lot of DAWs really lock you into like a certain playlist track where you can't move clips out of it, which in FL Studio, you can move anything anywhere. You're not locked into any playlist track. You can have multiple different audio clips in one playlist track if you wanted to do that, which is a little crazy. You it also have automation lanes and different spots and stuff and the reason this is cool because it really allows you to get a creative freedom across whatever song you're trying to build out especially if you're a visual person you can have gaps in certain areas and it'll just allow you to see your song how you really wanted it to be three is a playlist which you can really just build it out however you want it which is cool so for example this looks a little weird to me so basically this would be like an intro right here so we could go we could just drag this down and have this be a verse and then also if you wanted to you can have these tracks be on one you'd have to turn off the auto fading but if you wanted them up there you could Say you wanted the beat down here for some reason, just bring that down here. You can really do whatever you want. It's nice because you're not locked into any of these specific tracks and these will stay on each track by themselves. Or if you wanted to add a kick for some reason, for example, we'll go to my full circle drum kit, which is available at quintababa.com. We'll just grab a kick. Maybe you wanted to do something like this. Yeah, I'm in love you can just have a kick right here. I'm in love with a stripper bitch She kind of crazy but I tell her she a simple bitch like I said, just something stupid like that, but it's really nice to have the freedom to drag stuff wherever you want, especially if you're that type of producer. Now, the fourth reason is actually pretty funny because it kind of relates back to number three, the playlist. And in this case, we're actually taking away some of the freedom, but this is one of my favorite FL Studio features for recording where you can actually lock yourself into a playlist and link a mixer track to a playlist track. Now, the reason this is very cool in my opinion is because of how simple it makes the recording process. You'll have these three buttons right here where you can select your input, you can select if you want to hear yourself or not and then you just click the arm button and you can hear yourself and record right on this track 
And if you record over a certain audio clip, it's just gonna create another track that's gonna link into that playlist track. Now, the reason I like this is it makes FL Studio feel a bit more like a normal DAW, like Pro Tools or Logic in the ways that they would record, which just feels a little bit more at home because like I said, I did learn in Pro Tools, but this, you know, it's just a cool way to record if you choose to do so. Yo, real quick, before we do jump into the full part of the video, I want to mention today's sponsor, which is Boost Collective. If you make music at all and plan on uploading it, Boost Collective is definitely something you want to pay attention to. It's a music distribution and a music promotion company that basically streamlines that entire process and just makes it so much easier. And it's personally what I'm going to be using to upload my songs when I'm doing the Road to Artist series. Now, the cool part about Boost is it's not just a music distribution system, but also a music promotion system. You can literally use millions of playlists that Boost Collective has to get your music uploaded to these playlists, which is going to help you push those numbers up now if this interests you at all head down to the description and click my personal link it'll get you 60 percent off of pushing your music to playlists and also a six month membership now let's jump in the video and reason number four kind of being what locks you back into the playlist which is what i like for recording if we right click and click a on our keyboard or just assign to new audio tracks we're going to bring it back into this vocal right here and i'm going to group this with the above track so now we could bring these down and the cool part about being locked into one track when you're recording like I said, it's all up to personal preference, but that is the cool part about FL Studio. You can kind of do it however you want. The cool part about having a mixer track linked to a playlist track is if this is unlinked and you drag this audio clip up into it, you're going to see that it auto links it. So it's just, it's super nice to understand that if you drag an audio clip into this playlist, it's going to go exactly where you want it to go, which is this mixer track, which is why I like recording like that too. And it also... If you don't have room to record more audio clips, if you click record again, yeah. you can see that it automatically adds another track and groups it with the above track, which is super cool. Now, reason number five might be something specific to artists who are also producers, but this is something you might see in some of my past videos where I will create a beat on the spot throw a preset in and then record directly over that beat without rendering the beat out. Now, the reason this is cool is because if you think about it, you won't have to just cut an MP3 if you want to move something around. You could literally drag and drop the hi-hat, the clap, the 808, and everything else. Now, of course, you can do this in other DAWs, and I've seen it before, but for some reason, in my opinion, and what I have seen, is there's a lot of latency issues in other DAWs that somehow FL Studio doesn't give me, which I'm not too sure how that happens, but it seems to work out perfectly. Also, in a lot of other DAWs, if you start to make a beat and record in the same project, you're gonna notice that it's gonna start to get very hectic, and it's gonna be hard to keep track of everything, but maybe it is just because I'm biased in FL Studio, but it seems a lot easier to do. But those are the five reasons I truly believe FL Studio is one of the best DAWs to record in, and personally why it's my favorite now of course there are some issues that fl studio should fix and they haven't fixed yet but fl studio does tend to listen to its users so that's pretty cool too if you guys enjoyed this video make sure to hit that like button subscribe if you're new here and also check out this video because youtube thinks you're gonna like it